السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن Respected brothers, sisters, youth, children, the most respected elderly of the community, all responsibility. Today is 4th of Muharram, and it's good to remind ourselves in this new Muslim year on important resolution for our life. And if we remind ourselves on this beautiful quality, it would help us in every single aspect of our life, on every level. Be it a worship, be it our marriage, be it our family, our neighbors, our job, our citizenship, or being part of the global human family. Today, inshallah, I'll be talking about quality of ikhlas, sincerity. It's a foundation of our faith. Rest follows. I'll speak what Quran tells us about it, what our Prophet, peace be upon him, told us about it. I'll speak about some of the signs of sincerity. What are some of the areas where we must be sincere? 
what are some of the blessings and how to achieve it. How we could be sincere people. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves sincere people and sincerity. And every good human appreciates sincerity. Every good human being is in pursuit of becoming a sincere. We Muslims, alhamdulillah, we do many good deeds. The question is, are these deeds done sincerely and correctly? Sincerely, I mean, did we put our heart in it? Is our intention pure? And did we do it according to the some established methodology, manhaj? That's a question. We all, alhamdulillah, do many good deeds. What is our intention? Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas narrates one of amazing companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the story for himself. A story of prayer and patience. A man close to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that he heard Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, aids the ummah, Muslim brotherhood and sisterhood, us, because of all weak people, poor people because of our prayers, because of our supplications, and because of our sincerity. SubhanAllah, quality among these great qualities and responsibilities in Islam, quality of sincerity, ikhlas. Thus, we are all obliged as Muslims, if we want to be conscious Muslims, faithful Muslims, we are all obliged to go in pursuit of attaining this great quality. So when we read through the Quran, through the Hadith, we will find out ample, many of references that vividly and consistently speak to us through stories, through commands, through maxims about sincerity. Sincerity in many areas. O Muslims, be sincere in your faith. O Muslims, be sincere in your intentions. O Muslims, be sincere in your prayer, in your tawbah, in your repentance. Be sincere in your night prayer. Be sincere in your generosity. Be sincere in your businesses. Be sincere in your contracts. Be sincere in your righteous manners. In your relationships with your spouses, with your neighbors, with your citizens. SubhanAllah. Be sincere in every single aspect of our human life. You and I, as Muslims, cannot pick and choose. Islam is not the marketplace. Bring your bag, put what you want. Islam is a comprehensive system. You enter into it fully, totally. That's when it would matter. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, we can notice only through this reasoning that sincerity has to be with the Creator and the creation of the Creator. That is, and that is the only time when we have fulfilled this condition of being Muhammad. That is the reason why God Almighty told us, 
وما امروا الا ليعبدوا الله مخلصين له الدين خلفاء. They are not commanded but to be sincere in their faith, to have an inclination towards the truth and sincerity, as pointed out in this beautiful verse. So what is sincerity if you would look in the dictionary? It means linguistically to separate and distinguish, to filter all actions from any flaws, to filter it, to divide what is okay, what is not okay. It is actually an attitude of all hearts. It is a state of being genuine, truthful, honest, and free from any sign of hypocrisy or pretense. It is a clean, open state that invites gentle self-realization of who we are. Doing something with sincerity means to scrutinize intentions and actions and make them free from all impurities, be it show off, seeking attention, or pride, if you want the pleasure of God Almighty. Thus, the primary condition, foundational condition, for the acceptance of all the deeds that we do is sincerity. Primary condition for all things that we do is sincerity. When commenting on the verse second of Surah Mulk, هو الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is one who has created death and life to test good deeds of yours. Fudayl ibn Iyad, rahmatullah alayhi, said, it is those deeds that are most correct and most sincere. And then he was asked, what most correct and what most sincere? He said, things done sincerely, from the heart, for the sake of God, and done correctly, meaning using methodology that is right. Example, when you work for your family, you have to work to bring halal wealth into your, into your family. Clean earnings. Okay? What is correct methodology? Do it through proper jobs. Yes, you can bring a lot of money, but we have to take care of what kind of money we bring in. We cannot bring, you know, gambling. We cannot bring, you know, Las Vegas into the equation. Equation. We cannot. Muslims don't do the job. And then he recited this verse. فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Whoever would hope for the meeting with the Creator, let them do righteous works and do not associate anything with anyone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, when a person is not sincere in faith, in relationships, in job, in friendship, in citizenship, that person would find himself or herself perpetually disappointed. Perpetually disappointed. Because spiritual reward cannot be given by anyone but by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If people do it not sincerely, and if others don't say thank you and raise you to the sky, you will be distressed, you will be disappointed, and you will say, I won't do it again. Insincerity in doing deeds 
is a sure recipe for spiritual bankruptcy. It's a sh sure recipe for stress, distress, and anxiety. Too many expectations we have that people praise us and raise us to the pedestals above others. That's the reason why our Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Make your faith sincere. Even small deeds would be enough to you. As long as they are sincere. As long as they are sincere. I'll give you two examples. These examples are mentioned in Hadith of Bukhari. One of them talks about a man who was sinful and a woman who was sinful. And God Almighty forgave them for a simple act. They were immoral to the level it's not good to mention the words. Yet God Almighty, for one simple act, forgive them. During the drought, everybody was looking for water to quench the thirst. They found, they quenched their thirst. When they came out, they noticed a dog who was thirsty. They went back, nobody was there. No people, no one was there. They wanted for the sake of Allah to quench the thirst of this dog. And they did so. And God Almighty forgave them. SubhanAllah, Ibn Qayyim, Rahmatullahi Ali, one of the great Muslim scholars said, imagine if God Almighty would forgive for quenching the thirst of an animal, helping the animal, how God Almighty would not forgive for helping the human, for helping the needy, destitute. How God Almighty would not change your condition? My brothers and sisters, sincerity is so essential. That's the reason why Sahaba and companions of Prophet peace be upon him and scholars throughout history cautioned us about looking for sincerity in our actions. Ibn Mas'ud advised his students and he told them, if you are searching, if your intention in searching for knowledge is to uh, shame ignorant or to uh, quarrel with knowledgeable or to turn people's sights into yourself, meaning that you want to be glorified, then don't go on that path. Don't search knowledge. You are not for it. Because very soon you'll be so much disappointed that nothing would matter to you. So Ibn Mas'ud is telling his students, if you are after knowledge to shame ignorant, to put down scholars and to self-glorify yourself, don't go for it. That is the reason why Ibrahim Taimi said, a sincere Muslim is one who conceals his or her good deeds just as they conceal their bad deeds. A sincere Muslim is one who conceals their good deeds just as they conceal, hide, subhanAllah, their bad deeds. So we as Muslims, we don't market ourselves as far as our deeds are concerned. Whether you hide what is in your heart or not, God Almighty knows it. Whether you hide it or not, He knows it. Let us look into a beautiful example of Ali radiallahu an. Example of kindness, knowledge, mercy, wisdom. Ali radiallahu an, one of the caliphs later, he 
he would be going in during nights, putting food on his shoulders when everybody is asleep and carrying it to the needy people. Nobody knew about it. They got to know about it only when he passed away, when those families who didn't, be, didn't get any more food, when they realized that it is possible that it was Ali who passed away. It was Ali who was coming at their door. And actually when Ghusl was taken, when, when he was washed to be buried, there were signs all over his back that suggested marks that suggested that it was Ali radiallahu anh. Sincerity, my brothers and sisters. There are some signs that are obvious in regards to sincerity. People who are sincere, they hide their good deeds. They hide. They do not look or seek any praise. إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِبَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جِزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا We feed you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't need rewards or praise or thanks. And they are constantly mindful of their own shortcomings. And regularly purify their intentions. Regularly correct their intentions. Sufyan ibn al-Thawri rahmatullahi alayhi said, I have not tried to cure for myself anything harder than my intentions, for they keep changing on me. They keep changing on me. If I want praise, my intentions will be different. If I am after it, and of course, there is a Satan who is always out there trying to put some of the ideas into our heads. And when we fail, he says, in the body of the I'm clean from you. You did it by yourself. I didn't do anything with you. What are some of these secrets of ikhlas? What are the secrets of ikhlas? And subhanAllah, Sheikh Umar Abdul Kafir, he said, there are three of them. Servants who have ikhlas don't look at it. They don't know that they have it actually. It's natural with them. Servants of God who are sincere, they don't look at themselves from that perspective. It's natural for them. If they would know about it, they would look into it, maybe they will become arrogant. Number two, sincerity is between Creator and Abd, even angels don't record it, even angels don't know it, subhanAllah. Angels don't know it and don't record it, and shayateen cannot corrupt it, subhanAllah, and shayateen cannot corrupt it. The last point is shayateen are helpless in front of uh, these people who are sincere. Think about Omar radiallahu anh. Think about uh, Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Think about Khalid ibn Walid. When Khalid ibn Walid, the, one of the greatest generals in our Muslim history, when Omar radiallahu anh disqualified him, when he made him a regular soldier, some people thought this could be a problem to be demoted and just be put as a regular one. And they approached Khalid ibn Walid and he said, I don't fight for Umar. I don't, I don't do this stuff for Umar. I do this stuff for God Almighty. My sincerity is not because of Umar. My sincerity is because of God Almighty. So my brothers and sisters, you can see what are some of these secrets of sincere people. And lastly, what does it bring to you and I? Sincerity brings sweetness of truthfulness in our lives. We start loving truth. It assists other people to trust you. When people see your, truth, your sincerity, they trust you. You start trusting yourself. 
It supports ethical behavior in you. You feel discomfort if you do something that is unethical. It removes, actually, anxiety from your heart because you don't know what you've been talking in which group. So you, you cannot map it all in front of yourself. And when you, 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 as a sincere person, when you as a Muslim come in front of people and you are clean, you are transparent, you are not panicking, you are not under the pressure and stress. Basically, it brings peace of mind and heart into your, your life. And lastly, it makes you be loved by Allah and appreciated by people. So how do we get it? All of us want to, to be there. How do I get it? Learn about ikhlas. Learn about what it makes you to do things uh, for the sake of Allah and what you need to do in terms of avoiding showing off. Number two, one way of gaining ikhlas is by watching over yourself, by scrutinizing yourself. Salman rahmatullah he said, remember your Lord when you intend you make intention and then you judge. Why do, I, why do you do that? Why are you doing it? By also not caring about what people think about what I do would make you sincere. Do you do it for the sake of this or that? Number four, keep good company of sincere people. And number five, ask Allah to help you in that regard. وتوب الله ويستغفر جميعا في نرس الله كما يتوب إلى الله ويستغفره في اليوم مئة مرة ألا إن أحسن الكلام وعبد الغن النظام كلام الله الملك العزيز العلام كما قال الله تبارك وتعالى في نظم الكلام وإذا قرأ القرآن فاستمعوا له وانصتوا لأعلكم ترحمون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الدين من الله الإسلام والصلاه والسلام على رسول محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اللهم ربنا يا ربنا تقبل منا منك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا انك انت التواب الرزيق التواب الرحيم ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا منك رحمه انك انت الوهاب ربنا اغفر لنا ولجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم الله برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين يا رب او الله او لورد او كريتر ميك اس اوف ذوز هوز ايدنتيتي ود جرو اند هيلب اس تو هيلب اور تشيلدرن strengthen their Islamic identity. We ask of you, Arab, to help us to be sincere in our faith, in our relations, in our citizenship, to be sincere with people whom we know and people whom we do not know, Ya Rabbi al -Alami. We ask of you, Arab, to save us and save all of human brothers and sisters from COVID-19. We ask of you, Arab, those who are under natural disasters, to save them and to protect them and to those who are afflicted by disasters created by humanity. Stop those unjust people who are bringing that injustice into their lives and save them from injustice. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Subhanahu Rabbika Rabbila Izzat Yama Yisifun. Wassalamu Alaikum Yusimu Alhamdulillah. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adl wa liksani wa ita'i dhal qurba yunha min fakshai wa minkir wa bagh yadhukum la'wit tadhakarun wa qimu s-salah. الله أكبر الله